170 Chess Hockey Show on the truck. Sweet. Anyway, haven't done a draft bus video in quite some time. Actually, I think I have only ever done one. I think it's this guy. So now's just as good a time as any, right? I thought so too. So today, we're going to talk about Patrick Steffen. The other bust of the 90s, I guess, if you want to call it that. Let's talk about it. So to tell the story properly, we have to go all the way back to 1999. More specifically, the entry draft of 1999, which a lot of people, myself included, consider the 99 draft to be one of the worst drafts. Not so much because it lacked depth. It didn't lack depth. There's lots of depth. Just a lot of guys didn't make it or just didn't develop in proper amount of time. I mean, a good example, not counting picks two and three. I'll get that right out of the way. But I mean, you look at a guy like Tim Connolly, he went fifth. It took him about four or five years to become a regular. Barrett Jackman took him four years and he won a Calder Trophy. And the obvious picks two and three. I don't even think you need me to tell you who that is, but Daniel and Henrik, the twins, yeah. <laughs> anyway, getting off track here. Stefan was drafted first overall by the expansion Atlanta Thrashers. So, as if being number one pick wasn't enough, now you're the first draft pick in franchise history. Not that there's really a lot of pressure in that. I mean, guys like Korea, Gabarik, Nash. Nash wasn't their first pick. <laughs> they did fine as first picks. But I digress. Now, Atlanta only got this pick by way of Tampa Bay through Vancouver. And this is where my theory in Stefan comes in handy, but I won't get to that till later. But this is the magic of Brian Burke and how he managed to draft the Twins. But before Stefan was even drafted, there was a general consensus that he was injury prone. And he had a huge, not a huge history, but a history with concussions. Because concussions were starting to become concerning in 99. But apparently the Thrashers didn't see the red flag in that, but I think it was a lot of, they were probably handcuffed as to what they could do. So they took Stefan first overall. He did, however, end up making the team out of training camp. And in his debut season, his first game, October 2nd, 1999 against New Jersey, he managed an assist. So that's good. I mean, first overall pick gets a point in his first game. His first two goals came exactly a week later, October 9th against Buffalo. And that was probably the highlight of his season. In 72 games, he managed five goals and 20 assists. Now, the 72 was because injury, as you'd expect, right? His sophomore season saw a bit of improvement, but less games. And by a bit of improvement, I only mean five more goals and one more assist for 31 points in 66 games. For the 0102 season, he started in Chicago of the IHL, or AHL, sorry. We saw him put up three goals in five games and then called back up. Where in 59 games, his production went back down to seven goals and 16 assists for 23 points. So after his third season, he's not quite doing so well, is he? 0203, saw him get back in what's become probably normal production range for him at this point. Going 13 goals and 21 assists for 34 points in 71 games. So again, four seasons, he hasn't really played 
a lot of hockey, a lot of convincing hockey, if you will. It's so going into the 0304 season, his fifth season. Being riddled by injuries and poor production, his expectations weren't exactly high anymore because they already had Kovalchuk at this point, and 0304 wasn't good for Atlanta as well. More specifically, everything involving Danny Heatley at that time. But wouldn't you know it? He actually managed career highs all across the board. Full season. First full season. All 82 games. He got 14 goals and 26 assists for 40 points. So that's better than expectations, I would think. Things were looking up and things were looking good. And Then there was a lockout. A big lockout. So like a lot of players did in the 0405 lockout season, Stefan played in Europe. Played for Ives in the Finnish Elite League, where he managed 13 goals and 20 assists for 41 points in 37 games. And even got some playoff action in there, managing one goal, six assists in seven, seven, in seven games. So a career high outside the NHL. That's not a bad thing, though. I mean, it still shows some productivity. If he can score that many points in that many games, maybe he'll come back with some confidence, right? And he did. For 5 6 the lockout was over, thankfully. And again, limited by injuries to 64 games. And he scored 10 goals, 14 assists for 24 points. Now, this turned out to be his last season in Atlanta. So June 24th, 2006, or draft day 06, if you want to call it anything. Patrick Steffen, along with Yaroslav Modri, Modri sorry, traded the Dallas Stars for Nico Kapanen in a seventh round pick, which turned out to be Will O'Neill at pick number 210. So that and alone, his trade value being a fir former first overall pick being traded for a seventh rounder, Nico Kapanen. And not even just by yourself. Ouch. But 0607 came along. And this would end up being his last NHL season. But he was on a team that had other for former first overall picks on there. I mean, you had Medano and you had Lindros. Not that I don't think anything was going to actually materialize out of that being inspirational to him. But nevertheless... He only managed to play 41 games. So half of a season for five goals and six assists. Ouch. Ouch. Now, his time here is not necessarily known for his productivity. And I think you know where I'm going with this. I actually remember this happening, watching it on TV. January 4th, 2007, against the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton has the empty net. They have an extra guy on, on ice. The puck's turned over and Stefan's chasing it down. All he has to do is shoot, and it's in the empty net. He follows it in. He doesn't bother to shoot. He has a silly little skated in, and hits the puck hits a rivet on his way. And... I don't think it was a case of he was hot-dogging it or anything like that. He should have just shot. But he ended up falling over with Dave Valls Hemsky, the, way on the, the breakaway on the way down, putting it past Turco, sending the game to overtime, which Dallas did end up winning. I think they won in the shootout. But the unfortunate thing was that was one of his last games. Not his last game, but one of his last games. And again, limited by injury. Hell of a way to go out. Not the best way, but a hell of a way. So after the 6 07 season, his contract expired and the Stars decided not to re-sign him. Then he went to Bern over in Switzerland. Played three games before retiring for hockey for good. That was it. The injuries, all that stuff. How can you stay productive or confident at that point? 
His NHL stats are 455 games played, 64 goals, 124 assists for 188 points, and no playoff stats. First overall pick, and he's never played a playoff game. Ouch. Very ouch. So, really, if it weren't for the fact he was first overall, I don't think we would call him a bust at all. I think, ultimately, the wrong guy was chosen first overall. But, again, I think it was a case of their pr Atlanta was probably handcuffed. They probably had an agreement with Vancouver that, hey, we're not going to draft any of the Sedins. Four, five, six, I mean... Yeah, you got Brendel, Connolly. And who else is there? Remember, Lundmark was a first rounder. But anyway. Again, it's... At the time, it was... It was deep, yes, but it wasn't great. Other than two and three. And I think they're the only Hall of Famers from this draft class. Even though I don't think they're in the Hall of Fame. I think they might be. I don't know. I don't think they are. But anyway... Well, let me know what you think. Would you call him a bust? Or would, would it just be a case of, yeah, no, wrong guy, first overall? Let me know what you think. Drop me some comments in the comment section below. So that's 170, Chess Hockey Show. I want to thank you for tuning in. Your viewership always means so much to me. I don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you're here. And you made it. it. means I made it with you. But while you're here, hit that like button. Hit that red button, too. Because you know what we want to do. And you know what makes you feel good. So let's do it. <laughs> all, my all my socials in the description down below. Move forward. Like I said, tomorrow's a day off. It has to be. I mean, I know I've taken two days off with award nominees and all, but tomorrow's a day off. But either way, in the meantime, in between time, be looking for more videos from the Trev. Later.